Welcome at G of Listia. Yep. Thanks for, for having us. Sure, thank you for coming. Yeah. We're here in, in Mount of View at your office. Right. Um, Listia, can you sh share uh, what is it? So yeah, Listia is it's a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace um, where people can trade goods with each other. Um, our goal is really to help people you know, declutter their homes, get rid of all the things they don't need anymore. Uh, by trading it with other people in the marketplace for free. Uh, so we have about 7 million members now, and they've tra traded, I think, close to 100 million items. Cool. And, 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 and where to start? How, came, how, come you, how did you come up yes. with this idea? So um, we started in uh, 2009. So uh, my co-founder, James, and I, we'd always been working on a lot of uh, websites and side projects and different apps. Um, and it, it really started because we wanted to solve a problem that we saw and that we had ourselves. And that's simply that there's too much you know, stuff lying around the house that we didn't use anymore. Um, so one day my co-founder James actually came to lunch and he told me a story about how he tried to get rid of his snowboard boots on eBay. Um, it didn't sell and then he posted them on Craigslist and he got you know, dozens of emails from people who wanted them for free. So he chose someone at random. Uh, that night he arranged to leave work early and go home and meet the guy and the guy never showed up. So uh, his thought was, you know, there's got to be a much better and simpler way to simply get rid of things you don't need. And obviously, you know, at the time there's huge marketplaces out there uh, where you can sell uh, you know, sell things to each other. But it's one of those things where despite those huge marketplaces, we still saw, you know, lots of stuff at home that you just were never motivated enough to sell. Uh, you know, the average U.S. household has $3,000 worth of stuff just lying around. So we, we wanted to build this light, easy, sort of safe and social way to simply trade um, with your neighbors, you know, even with people across the country. And and how did you realize your your, uh, uh, your plan to, to, to really a, a platform? Yeah, so um, we started by building just a mobile app uh, website. Um, did you build it yourself? Yeah, so we built oh. it ourselves. Um, we, uh, so James and our, our college buddies, uh, we went to Cornell, we stu studied double E and moved out here and were, you know, worked in, in the tech field. So um, we are doing a lot of coding and, and hardware engineering. So yeah, we built it ourselves. Um, we actually applied to uh, Y Combinator in uh, summer of 2009. Mm -hmm. So we were accepted into the program and, and that was sort of our first you know, funding that we received. So this is a, a, a kind of a, a accelerator a, program. Yeah, it's a startup incubator accelerator yep. program. Um, and that really kick-started everything. So um, I had already quit my job and James then quit his job and we, we decided to work on this full time. Um, so with that funding, you know, we spent the summer building the app. Uh, we launched it, I think, in uh, August of that year. And yeah, it's, it's been five years since then and sort of slowly growing over time. You know, it's very difficult to build a marketplace. So mm -hmm. it's kind of this early on, it was definitely a grind trying to make sure, you know, each day just to make sure you have more items in the marketplace than the day before. And, that's and, and, sort of and, 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 and how did you arrange to, to get the first demand and supply on the platform? Um, yeah, so, it's, so we actually took our funding, uh, $15,000 when we launched uh, the website, we went to local stores and bought, you know, all these little things that we could seed into the marketplace. On top of that, James and I, we, you know, went around our houses and listed literally everything we could find that we didn't need. So, you know, over the years, I accumulated hundreds, of, hundreds of dollars of video games and books and other things. So that's how we seeded it. Is literally our own things. You know, we begged our friends, even begged our investors. You know, can we get some some stuff that you don't need anymore? Uh, and seeded it that way. And, and, and the other side, the people uh, who are searching for, for stuff? Yeah, so we uh, were fortunate we launched, uh, so we did all that before we launched formally um, on TechCrunch. Um, so Good place to launch. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it, it was, we were very, very fortunate. Um, they, they, were, they loved what we were doing. So um, when we launched, you know, we had several thousand visitors that day. And it was really important to have stuff in the marketplace mm -hmm. when those people, you know, arrived. So that was really the push, and you know, from then on, we just kind of tried to, you know, spread it by word of mouth, get people to tell their friends. Um, we met up locally with uh, many people in the early days to exchange the items, uh, and we would ask them, you know, 
do you like this? You know, how's it working for you? Why would you use this over Craigslist? And, and we learned a lot that way as well. So just talking to people yeah. locally. Yeah. Mm. And, and you also, uh, 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 people are not trading for money. They're trading for your own, for, for your own, for your own uh, yeah. currency. Yeah, so we have, a, we call it Listia credits. Um, so the way it works is you might have an old cell phone you don't use anymore. So you snap a photo with your phone, put it on the site, um, and you'll receive Listia credits for that phone. Um, and then you, you know, give the phone to the other party. You can then use those credits to get anything else you want um, in, in the marketplace. So that's how we sort of make it so it's trading, but you don't actually have to find someone that wants exactly what you have and that you want exactly what they have. You can do it you know, in a roundabout way. So. And, and what, 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 when I'm going to, do, uh, to join the platform today, uh, yep. I don't have any, uh, any credits. Uh, can I buy them? Or? Um, so when you join, we give you, I think right now, a thousand credits just, just for joining. Um, there's a lot of ways to earn credits. Um, you can buy them. You can do things like engage with the site. Uh, you know, if you're listing items or commenting or leaving f good feedback for people, we re reward you with uh, credits all along the way. It's a lot like a, a mobile game in that sense, a social game where um, you, there's a lot of points where we reward you with more credits as you actively participate in, in the ecosystem. Yeah. And, and so, so it's, it's, it's working like a, like a, a, a real currency? Um, to some extent. Yeah. It's, um, it's not a currency in a technical sense. It's, it's more like a closed loop value store. So I would say it's a little bit more like a gift card or the currency that you find in games. Uh, the, the main differentiator there is that you can't ever get real money in exchange for your currency. So there's no way to sort of cash out of the yeah. system. Um, so it's kind of this closed uh, closed loop sort of ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. it's closed loop, uh, but, 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 the, but the amount of, of, of credits will grow. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's the, the, the amazing thing is we've built this sort of micro economy, you know, um, not sort of intentionally. I, in our mind, it's it's always been more like karma. So like the more you give to people, the mm -hmm. more you can get. And of course, you need some unit to sort of store that value very discreetly. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely grown into this big, you know, economy in mm. its own right with things like inflation and, and other other issues. So and, and and how do you deal with that? Because I yeah. think uh, when you think about the idea of credits, uh, uh, yeah. you think okay, it's, it's it's quite simple. We're going to mm. to do credits, but then yeah. it, then then it start working, and then you, you uh, wh right. what kind of challenges do you face uh, um, uh, over the years? Yeah. So I think. Around year two or three is when we realized, you know, this is working really well, but it's bringing its own set of challenges. And um, I think the most obvious one is as we continue to give away credits, you know, there's more credits in the in the economy and things like inflation come to mind. Um, uh, we deal with it in a few ways. So obviously the economy is growing. So the number of items you can get in, in the marketplace is growing. So in that sense, it's helping to keep prices stable. Um, but we do have uh, sinks that we've implemented within the product. So you can spend credits on premium features like, oh, can you please feature um, feature my listing or make the title bold or um, different ways that you can then spend credits. And, and when you do that, we soak them you know, back mm -hmm. out of the <coughs> system. Um, so we call them sinks, and that's how we control inflation as well. Yeah. And, 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 and what does the tech server says about this? Because I, c I can imagine in the beginning mm -hmm. they say, oh, it's, it's cute, it's, 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 it's a small startup. Yeah, yeah, and I say yeah. uh, about 100 million items traded, that's, that's, right. that's a lot. Right. Yeah, so um, there's no, I guess there's no tax issues unique to the currency. Um, but like any marketplace out there, um, you know, eBay or Craigslist included, um, there's definitely tax implications when you have... Uh, I think that you know the tax service they they treat any sort of income or gain as taxable income. Mm -hmm. So once you get into the realm of you know a business trying to sell a lot of items, uh, whether it be on on Listia or other marketplaces, it, the the person has to treat it as income, and that's mm -hmm. sort of the the main tax issue that we yeah. see. Yeah. But I don't think there, uh, there's, uh, 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 there's room for how much Listia credits did you earn this year? No, no, <laughs> there's not. There's not. So it's a uh, I, I think the calculation is more uh, value based. So, for example, um, you know, if, if a phone is worth $100 and you're selling it, um, potentially, you know, you can write $100 as income in that yeah. sense. So, yeah. 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 But yeah, there's no. In interesting. There's no <laughs> I think they have no idea what to do with it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, um, 
And even with marketplaces like eBay and Craigslist, even five years ago, um, you know, people were trying to figure out what's the best way to do accounting for these things. So, yeah. so companies like PayPal, um, money transmitters will report um, earnings above a certain amount, and yeah. that's sort of how they keep an eye on things. And and, and, and do you also have to, to give data to, to the tech services? Um, no, not right now. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I think the it's more about whether or not you're a money transmitter. So yeah. 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 And, 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 what, and what kind of stuff do people trade on your platform? Um, yeah, huge range of stuff. So we started with um, sort of lower end items, you know, things that you wouldn't sell on eBay or Craigslist. So you might found books and, you know, old DVDs and things like that. Um, but, you know, over the past five years, it's really accelerated. We, we see iPads, computers. Um, the most popular categories are things like jewelry and collectibles and clothing items, um, a lot of toys and, and media as well. So yeah. it it's kind of runs the entire range. Like we have categories for pet supplies and you know auto supplies and things like that. And, so and, and did you ever thought about it when you started the, the, the platform that, that also iPads would be traded for this year credits? Um, we didn't. So I mean, we always kind of hoped we would get there, um, but. We really wanted to first fill the void of, you know, there's a threshold where you sell things on eBay. And under that, it's kind of stuff that's lying around your house. So we really wanted to attack all that stuff. And I think just as time went on, um, people saw more value in the Listia credits. They believed in it. They know they can get good stuff in exchange for their good stuff. And it just kind of naturally, you know, yeah. grew that way. Yeah. So, yeah. Interesting. And, 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 and this is also really about trust. Because also yeah. when you, <coughs> uh, normally when you talk about platforms, trust is really important. But also yeah. when you are talking about a, a, a closed currency, I think right. trust is even more important. Yeah, yeah certainly. How, how do you deal with, uh, with the trust issues? Um, so trust is one of the most important things in building, you know, any peer-to-peer -peer service, uh, especially a marketplace. So um, <coughs> we have an entire team up here helping people feel comfortable helping people through the process, um, kind of building that trust over time. So anytime, you know, you might have an issue with someone, um, even though it's not an issue directly with us, we step in and try to help out as much as we can. So that's, it, it's really important because as a person uses, you know, any sort of sharing economy service, um, they're kind of always dealing with a third party and not the company itself. So the company Oftentimes, it's out of their direct control, like what the consumer's experience is. So, um, to the extent that we can step in and help anytime there's any issue, um, yep. that's what kind of builds trust. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really important because in the end, uh, they are doing business with each other, but but yeah. uh, but they are also trusting the listing brands. Yeah. So it's really, yeah. Really, and 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 you say uh, we're working on uh, on building this trust. Mm -hmm. uh, at, at what way uh, or, or what tools do you use to, to build this trust? Yeah, so we have, um, within the product, we have a lot of uh, verification systems. So you can uh, only deal with verified accounts if you want. You can find people who verified their phone number, bank account. Um, you can find people with over 50 feedback, positive feedback from other people. So those are sort of different product things. Um, we have a whole dispute system. So. If you were to trade a phone with someone uh, or buy a phone from someone and you never receive it, you can file a dispute and we give you some time to work it out directly between the two parties. Otherwise, we step in and, and make a decision about you know um, what went wrong in this trade. Um, and the fortunate thing is we use the credit system. So in, in the worst case, you know, we say, you know, we don't know what happened. Uh, please, both of you, keep your credits. Uh, good luck with yeah. the next trade. So yeah. We're able to kind of help people in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And 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 uh, you're now uh, 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 active only in, in the U.S. or also um, in other countries. So yeah. So we started in the U.S. only. Um, in the past two years, we've kind of changed a lot of our architecture underneath to be able to support other countries. So we've launched in Canada. Um, we don't. I would say you know less than ten percent of our usage is uh, international right now. Um, but we do have sort of long-term plans to expand um, into other countries, um, you know, per perhaps starting in Europe uh, with uh, starting with English-speaking countries uh, just to reduce the workload yeah, on us yeah. and then eventually localizing and, you know, with the language and, and the text and things like that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah because in the, the language is, I think, uh, especially in Europe, uh, one, of, one of the biggest challenges. Yeah, yeah. And so definitely a huge challenge in expanding internationally for anyone is the yeah. language. But yeah. the cool thing actually is that we have the currency system um, where, you know, it's kind of 
country agnostic. It doesn't matter, you know, there's no, I guess, sense of like a currency exchange. It's just all this of credit. Yeah. So to the yeah. extent that you're willing to ship something, you know, um, internationally, it, it just sort of works. Yeah. 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 And 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 all shipping process uh, are, are people are, are dealing it with themselves, or do you also help them with that? Um, so we're building something now to help them print labels and make shipping easier. But the the way it works mostly right now is almost all of our users provide free shipping, which is you know pretty mind blowing for us mm -hmm. um, as we built the the marketplace. So. I'm so willing to get rid of my phone and, and I'm going to pay to ship it to you. Okay. Um, so that's how it mostly works and it, it really ties into the culture of the marketplace. It's all about um, giving uh, as well as receiving. So the, the reason I'm willing to do that is I'll get more credits for my listing, but I also know on the flip side, you know, when I buy something from you, you're going to provide free shipping. So in the grand scheme of things, it, it kind of, you know, it's a wash, it, it yeah. evens out, but it makes things really, really simple. Yeah. Yeah, but, but people, they can they make decisions uh, themselves if they want to charge for shipping or yeah. not. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's also the um, opportunity to charge for shipping. Um, we see that um, often from newer users who haven't um, seen how most people are doing things yet. And also, I mean, it makes a lot of sense if you're shipping something really heavy. Um, and perhaps wow. you say, you know, I'll trade this locally, but mm. if I have to ship it, you know, across the state, then, um, you know, it's ten dollars or fifteen dollars. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and 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 the company is is, is growing uh, stable, but quite fast. Yeah. And and yeah. what way do you really manage to 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 build up a healthy growth? Because I think mm. that's one of the the biggest challenges of of of, of organizations uh, when they're growing, to to make sure that also the, the DNA doesn't leave the company and. Uh, how do you do that? Uh, you mean internally with the company? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're very um, when we look for new team members, it's it's as much about you know a, a fit with the team as it is about you know any of the other credentials and and things that we're looking for. So we're we're really careful about finding people that um, share the same values as us, and um, I think that has been you know the most important factor in sort of building up the team. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 uh, talking about the collaborative economy, mm -hmm. um, there 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 are, there are quite some things going on. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, so really really in the media. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that? Uh, about uh, about all the media attention of the uh, of the sharing and, collab and collaborative economy? Yeah, I think it's great. It's um, it's great for all the companies um, in this space right now. I, I know that you know, for example, when we started, not everyone knew what the collaborative economy was, the sharing economy. Um, those terms weren't sort of in the general vocabulary yet. So a lot of these companies started many years ago. For example, Airbnb started before us um, simply to solve a problem that they saw in a unique way. And the fact that now there's this macro trend of you know sharing and, and working together, um, all these companies are able to sort of be at the forefront of the conversation. And yep. it, it definitely helps the cause and pushes it forward. Yeah. And um, also looking to the future, uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, that quite some uh, organizations are now using or are, 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 are going to use APIs uh, yeah. to grow really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, I can imagine that that may be like, like a Uber a a API or maybe a right. platform that right. that uh, where people uh, who are traveling a, a ride sharing platform that also yeah. uh, provides people to 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 share uh, or or to transport uh, goods uh, right. or, or ride right. sharing. Right. Uh, do you yeah. are you also looking at that kind yeah. of opportunities? Yeah. So there's there's a really exciting opportunities in local delivery. Um, so yeah, I think some of the ride sharing companies are experimenting with. You know, the cars are all around anyway, it, you know, when they're not taking passengers, they can be helping with transmitting goods locally. Um, a lot of the big companies, Google, Amazon, eBay, all experimenting with local delivery as well. And that's more of a consumer retailer relationship. Um, but yeah, it, specifically for Listia, we're looking for ways to help people not have to like go to the post office, pack something up and ship it. So. Um, you know, I think very soon in the future, in the next couple of years, there will be easy ways for anyone living somewhere to hand off an item to someone, deliver it across town, um, whether that's through ride sharing or, or a lot of the dedicated services popping up, uh, I think remains to be seen. But it's, it's definitely really exciting. It's sort of this on-demand lifestyle uh, that's, you know, going to come up really soon. Yeah. yeah. 
and and uh, the funding of the company. You said that uh -huh. first uh, uh, with, with the with the accelerator program. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. How, how did you also grow the, the the funding of the company? So funding um, over the past five years. So every couple of years we raised some money. So we raised um, from the Y Combinator in 2009. Um, at the end of that year, we raised a small seed round of four hundred thousand um, dollars. And then I think two years later, we raised uh, another seed round of one point seven five million from a lot of uh, angels and uh, seed investors in the valley, like Andreessen Horowitz, um, Max Levchin, SV Angel. Uh, a lot of people who've given us, you know, a ton of advice and help. And then uh, last year we raised our Series A, which is a, a nine million dollar Series A from uh, General Catalyst. Yeah. yeah. So, so the, uh, the, uh, there's now a lot of funding uh, yeah, issues yeah. in in in, in, the, in the clarity economy. Yesterday yeah. we talked to Jeremiah. We uh -huh. said, okay, there's now uh, about eight point eight point eight point four billion dollar wow, wow. in the clarity yeah. economy. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm also re really interested. Uh, li like as you know, I, I also uh, did quite some things with branding. Uh -huh. And uh, with my brand expedition, I was most impressed uh, about family companies okay. because yeah. of their really long term vision. Right. right. Um, but when you're talking to VCs, they want yeah. to have a, a, a return, return in, in right. let's say, five years. Right, right. Um, and what way do you keep the balance between the the, the short-term profit and the long-term vision of the company? Yeah, yeah, certainly. The um, I think in the case of huge platforms or marketplaces, in our case, um, it's fairly aligned, just because you know investors know that. You know, in general, their portfolio is going to contain a lot of companies that aren't necessarily platforms or marketplaces, and they might have shorter horizons for some of those companies. Um, but when you're talking about building a lasting platform, think back to like eBay and you know the the big platforms of those days. Um, it's going to be you know a 50, 100 year company, and so th they're definitely very patient, and um, the interests there are aligned. They want to see something that's so ubiquitous that you know it's it's a household name. Everyone uses it. And I think that for them is a huge, huge win and definitely are willing to forego any short term sort of um, exits or gains yeah. when, when they see something that's so massively, you know, uh, different. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm also interested because uh, what I see is that that's uh, lots of crowd companies, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the way that they, uh, they get funded, it's, it, 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 it's, 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 it's quite uh, traditional. Yeah. And there are yeah. not really much of companies uh, who are also using their crowdfunding right. uh, and, and, right. and, and right. using their own community to, to raise the money. Uh, yeah. Did you ever yeah. consider it also to start a crowdfunding campaign to, 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 to get a part of your, the money yeah. you need uh, uh, for growing? Yeah, I've actually I've considered that. Um, I would love to be able to do that someday. Um, I think uh, I studied sort of um, even back in the 90s, eBay for example, had considered during their IPO to spread, you know, spread that wealth uh, amongst all of their passionate users. And the only reason it kind of grinded to a halt was a lot of regulation and, and different sort of legal issues around that. Um, but nowadays, you know, things are changing so quickly with crowdfunding and even uh, equity crowdfunding, which you've had experience with. Um, I think that the day will come where it will be easy and straightforward to you know, be able to share that wealth because um, to the extent that we're building a, a very valuable platform and marketplace, you know, it's definitely because of all the uh, the people that make up the marketplace and the community and that's the only reason that we exist is to help those people and without them there's no value. So yeah. it, it would be uh, yeah amazing to be able to do that. Um, in a sort of straightforward, easy way. I, you've probably heard Reddit is is trying to do that as well. They, I think they've okay, created their um, their own cryptocurrency and then are spreading that um, around their community and sort of, you know, sidestepping a few different things along the way to, to make it happen. And um, yeah, right, interesting. It's awesome. I, think, yeah. I think when you look at at, at engagement, mm. I think the, the the most maximum engagement is when people are or giving you money or when they also or ends. Uh, yeah. a, a partly uh, uh, owner of the company. Right, right, right. With right. the challenges that we'll get with that, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, like, uh, because you said, uh, okay, uh, we're also now uh, active in in uh, in, uh, in Canada. Yeah. What steps did you have to take to, to enter a new country? Um, so Canada wasn't too difficult. There were just um, a lot of people from that country kind of knocking on our door saying, hey, <laughs> this is, you know, this is great. I w they could use it, obviously, already. Um, but there's different product issues. Like when we built the marketplace from the ground up, it was very US centric. It's just like free US shipping. And just down to simple things like 
okay, you know, you can select any country. It doesn't have to be the U.S. So we took a lot of steps technically to um, make sure nothing was specific to any country. And then sort of, you know, you sign up for any country and you can ship to any country. And those are things we built already. Um, but if we were to launch further than, say, Canada, there's a lot of, you know, marketing and uh, brand exposure type activities that you need to do. It's very difficult. Um, and Canada specifically wasn't as difficult just because of the close ties with the yeah. uh, U.S. already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, there are quite some, some platforms in the U.S. Mm -hmm. who are now also thinking about already actively in, in Europe and, yeah. uh, and their different approaches. Some yeah. like, uh, like Kickstarter, they don't have their own office in Europe. Uh, uh, okay. uh, and so they just opened the platform for, right. uh, li 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 like in the Netherlands, for, for, for Dutch uh, projects. Yeah. Uh, I think Indiegogo, they have some local yeah. people. Okay. Uh, yeah. What do you think about the different strategies, uh, and what strategy uh, would you prefer? Um, I think it's easy to test markets without sending people there. It, it depends on the nature of the service. So when it's predominantly online, you can launch, you know, in a country, and in the case of like Indiegogo or, or crowdfunding, like you can solicit one great project, and people will rally around it, and it can be a success. Um, so I think that's definitely a very viable strategy. For us, it's a little more difficult. If we launch in a, in a location and there's only five people or ten people or a hundred people, you know, in the marketplace, then it, it doesn't, still doesn't quite have enough traction to, to grow. Um, so I think, you know, it's a little harder, it, it's a little harder for a marketplace, a true sort of peer-to-peer -peer marketplace yeah. to, to spring up that way. It has to be a lot more of a concentrated effort, I think. Yeah, so what so what you need, need is, is is a local entrepreneur who yeah. uh, starts uh, yeah. buying yeah. and selling uh, stuff uh, f uh, from their right. friends and like the the, the, the the same way that you started. Right, right. So it's a uh, it can happen in a very grassroots manner or um, you know with a lot of resources you can say you know I want to replicate this model um, in this country. Uh, and for us the, the the only thing sort of holding us back right now is we still want to perfect some pieces of the product so we don't have to troubleshoot across multiple countries um, and then it, to, to the extent that we can go somewhere and just think about scaling um, that's when I think we'd be ready to, to make a you know concerted effort somewhere yeah. else yeah and how many months of year do you think it's going to, to take um, you know, hopefully not too much longer I think the product itself is working really well already um, just a couple final tweaks mostly on the mobile and local transactions um, and then, you know, as soon as six months uh, to 12 months, I think, uh, would be realistic. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And what about um, uh, your business model? Because people yeah. are giving things away for free. Right, right, uh, right. So, so where does you... Uh, uh, where do we <laughs> make money? Um, so I think from the start, we wanted there to be a very completely free way to trade. So even to this day, you can list an item, trade with someone, and it'll never cost you anything. And that's sort of the, the difference and the reason why it motivates people to trade. It's not because it's free, it's because it's light and easy. You don't need a bank account, you don't need a credit card, you just, you just trade. Um, so to preserve that, we've done things uh, to monetize in different ways than other marketplaces. So there's no transaction fees. Um, and so we do things like there are you know advertisements on the site in the app um, because there's already purchase intent so you know it works because you might be looking to buy an iPad but maybe you don't win the iPad that's on list yet right now and you know we might show you deals for other iPads or other tablets um, so that sort of um, roundabout monetization works for us um, you can also buy credits it's, um, it's, it's a lot like a hotel or airline miles, you know, we don't quite have enough, you don't have time, you're not going to fly again before this trip. Um, you can buy some right there to top off your account and win an item. And the classic example is, you know, I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff in my garage, I have a certain number of credits, but I really want that, you know, digital camera. Um, I can spend, you know, a few dollars or tens of dollars to top off my account to get that camera. Um, and later on, you know, I'll list more items, but because of the time sensitivity, you can't do it right then. Yeah. Um, and then, I guess the last way is uh, similar to a lot of online games, so you can also do different, it, it's more like advertising, you can do different offers, and like if you buy this Groupon at a discount, we'll give you, 
you know, 100 credits or 1,000 credits or something like that. So there's ways to sort of just earn credits through your own daily activities. Yeah, yeah. and you have to win. Uh, because uh, when you look at the process of, of, mm -hmm. of, of, of getting something from your platform, yep. you have to uh, bid? Yeah, so um, the basic process is bidding. Uh, so it's an auction-based uh, system. Um, you can find things that have a fixed price as well. So over the years, we've found that you know people sometimes just want to list it with a fixed price. So if I have an iPad, I can start it at you know one credit bidding, and then say you know give me ten thousand credits um, as a fixed price. And then so there's sort of this hybrid mentality. You can go around bidding for things or looking for things that you can just buy uh, instantly. Yeah. yeah. But I think that for that uh, also the, the inflation issue is quite interesting because mm -hmm. when I'm going to 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 to, to sell my my iPad right. on list, right. yeah, uh, then right. I would think, okay, the iPad is worth let's say three hundred dollar, right. so that's the next amount of list right. points. Right. Uh, right. So right. people, I think, uh, are in their head are always recalculating to the yeah. existing currency. Yeah. So it in I think at at some scale people do that. They in their head they know like right now you know. A dollar might be worth 500 credits or a thousand credits, um, but mostly people go by feel. So and and it works out. It's it's really interesting. It's like I've gotten rid of all the old clothes that my daughter you know has grown out of, um, and I have a certain number of credits. To me, is that worth an iPad or is that worth a computer or is that worth you know a, a season of you know new clothes for my daughter? And um, that's sort of the feel. Um, and the calculation really comes at the very high end of goods. So the most expensive goods yeah. is where people start to um, make sure they're not overspending or underspending. Um, yeah. But for sort of the bulk of stuff in the middle of the, the price range, um, the exchange rate varies so widely that it's not um, something that people think about directly all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then we also see uh, most of also, also with the, ex with the uh, ex uh, expensive stuff, uh -huh. that's that people when they uh, sell something, they yeah. buy something new really fast because then they, they know that the, the currency will have the same value? Uh, oh no, so we don't really see that. We see um, people don't hoard, mm -hmm. but uh, at the same time I think there's this it's really fun to sort of have a stockpile of credits and browse through the app every day to see what's new. So um, a lot of people like to, you know, store them up, and then, you know, for the next month they can basically shop online mm -hmm. every day and never feel like they're spending any money. So um, there's not, there's there isn't inflation to the extent that you know there's pressure to sell mm -hmm. um, or t to buy things. So uh, no, we haven't seen that. In the early days, we did see a little bit of that, and that's when we implemented enough features and syncs to make sure you know we could hold it steady. Yeah. yeah. And can you s s s share more information about these things? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you already uh, mentioned one, but uh, yeah. are there more? Yeah, so there's, um, <coughs> so you can um, spend credits to raise the profile of your listing. You know, make it featured, uh, I guess not featured, make it bold or give it higher ranking within mm -hmm. the search engine. Um, we also have a reward store, so we've partnered with um, various uh, retailers, currently Amazon, Walmart, and Best Buy where you can spend your credits to buy brand new goods from these retailers as well. So the use case, it's kind of like a trade-in program. So, you know, trade in all the stuff in your garage and get, you know, a, a flat screen TV or something mm -hmm. from Best Buy. Um, and in those cases, you know, the credits come out, they don't go to the retailer, we just pull them out of the economy. So yeah. we have a very direct control of being able to pull credits out as well yeah. as we yeah. need. So, so, yeah. you, so you, you also got your own control dashboard where you yeah. can, uh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, so we, we monitor things. Um, it's not like you know the second or third year where things were just up and down. We're, we're very careful about that. Yeah. And I think that's why people don't feel pressure to you know, spend immediately. There's no real immediate danger of any hyperinflation or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. And with yeah. working with the partners, uh, do, do they get a discount with the points or, or do they really um, get, get uh, so stuff So there's free? a little bit of a discount um, for us, but for for the user, for you know the person who's spending their credits, yeah, it's completely free. So they, you know, they take their credits and they can get the TV. There's no shipping, um, and in some cases they can even go to the local store to pick it up. So, yeah. so but then it's 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 it costs you money to 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 make yeah, the deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for that, in that case, it's kind of us spending money to buy back credits or pull them out, um, mostly for inflation purposes, but also. 
Um, we like the idea of partnering with, um, you know, I guess traditional retailers. Um, I think you described them as like old economy, um, and showing them that you know there's a way that we can work together and. We, we do generate sales for you, but at the same time, these people are perhaps getting something that they wouldn't otherwise buy. Um, and it's kind of this global, or right now national, like trade-in program where it's not like you have to trade in an iPhone for the next gen iPhone. It's like you can trade in anything in your house yep. for you know the things that you actually want. So yep. to, to show them that there's this sort of power behind the, the sharing economy and you know to actually drive um, sales for them is I think uh, a big part of it as well for us yeah. Yeah. <coughs> very interesting yeah. yeah that's cool and 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 and, and looking at the future uh, mm -hmm. what are your main challenges for building a sustainable model uh, for listia in, in in the future yeah yeah so the main challenge um, well the things that we're facing right now is like we want more local transactions we want um, we're building up our app to be mobile centric instead of you know we started on the web um, so the challenge is to get people to you know know that this is an option for them to know that you know it's actually really easy to snap a photo of things in your house in your closet list them and get get them out of the house and get value in return for them yeah. um, and <clears throat> yeah right now you know people don't really know and they you know either end up throwing the items away which is a huge waste or um, you know leaving them to clutter up the house long term so yeah yeah and and uh, uh, what 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 can we expect from you in in in, in the near future so so, yeah. so we, we already discussed uh, maybe uh, opening in 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 other countries are there also right. new futures yeah. future sets you go to to introduce yeah so the 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 big things are around, and I think this probably ties into your previous question too, of like what are the challenges? I think um, the big features are all gonna be to remove friction in the system. So when you think about having to ship something to someone, that's you know a huge hassle in, in a lot of people's minds. So uh, we're building a lot of features to reduce that down to you know the click of a button. You know your printer will print the label, you slap it on, send it on its way. Um, talking to local startups and companies about how can we facilitate the shipping of these items or just the local delivery. Um, and then the big sort of um, opportunity for us is to um, allow more uh, local trading. So right now, unless yeah, you won't find like a table like this because you can't ship it. Um, but there's a huge opportunity in being able to get rid of huge, large, bulky items locally yep. um, with other people. And I think that's when the true potential will sort of be unlocked because uh, there's no shipping required. It's very much a help your neighbor type attitude. Um, and, you know, when we can get to that point, I think it'll be a, a big win for us. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and what is your ultimate goal or dream with Listia? <coughs> yeah, so the dream really is to build, you know, this global sort of repository of stuff. So when you think about people today, it's, you know, you consume, you buy items, when you're done with it, it just kind of sits there. Uh, in the future, our dream is to build, you know, this I get marketplace of items where every time you're done with something, um, you know that you just snap a photo of it and put it back into this, you know, repository and someone else can get value out of it immediately. Um, so the dream is to, create the one place where everyone goes to reuse items. Um, and that doesn't really exist right now. You know, people's main motivation when they sell things they don't need is, you know, for the money. But we want to change how people deal with stuff they don't use. And even though it's not, it's not renting or, or anything like that, it's just anytime you're done with something, you know, let someone else have it. And at the same time, you know there's millions of items that you can take out of the marketplace as well and it's sort of this one-to-one -one trade yeah sounds good yeah, mm -hmm. yeah good luck with that thank, thank you, you very thank much you. yeah thanks so much Look forward